Hey guys, what's going on? In today's video, we are going to learn about playing rhythm grooves on a harmonica, playing these blues progressions that use the chords that you already know, but turning it into a nice kind of groovy thing that you can repeat, and it'll get you one step closer to playing something like this. One, two, three. <laughs> All right, on with the video. Welcome to the Harmonica Blues Basics series, teaching you how to play the blues on harmonica. This is part four. If you're new to the series, consider going all the way back to part one, which is super relevant for today's lesson. And you can do that by clicking the link above. For everyone else, this lesson is standalone, so don't sweat it. Before we start, I've got something for you. It's called the Blues Harp Toolkit. Inside, I've got some resources for you, including a tool to help you find the right keys, backing tracks, scale references, and more. So if you'd want to check it out, the download link is down below in the description, and it's totally free. All right, let's do this. In the first lesson in this series, I talked a lot about chords, what the chords are on harmonica, and how you can match them with a 12 bar blues. So you can use these chords to play some cool grooves, which is a great way to practice the blues on your own because Listen, as we know, one of the best things about this instrument and one of the things that makes it so appealing is the fact that you can always have one on you because they're so damn small. Now, if you have one on you, you're probably not going to have access to backing tracks or definitely another musician if you're just kind of pulling your harmonica out real quick for a quick jam out in public. But you can play things like this. So I want you to give this a shot. And what we're going to do today is work through some of these grooves like a train rhythm and a blues shuffle so you know exactly what to play when you have that time to pick up your harmonica and get some quick practice in. Now as I said in the first lesson in this series the blues is usually made up of three chords the one chord the four chord and the five chord. Now these numbers here they are roman numerals they stand for the chords that uh, we can play in a key which are called diatonic chords and the blues happens to commonly just use three of them and thankfully we can play those chords on a harmonica pretty easy so i'm going to switch over here to a c harmonica this is a honer crossover if you're curious which is probably my favorite out of the box harp and we are going to go work through these now now our first chord, the one chord, is a G. And that's just holes one, two, and three draw. You can extend it up to four if you want, whatever floats your boat. The next chord we have is the four chord, which is a C, which is the labeled key of your harmonica, right? And that is a one, two, and three blow. And sometimes you might want to play it in the middle register, which is four, five, and six blow. And the last chord we're going to do here is the D chord. That's the five chord. And I like just playing this with four and five draw. All right, so those are our chords, and we can use them to create rhythm patterns, kind of like a guitarist strumming chords. I'm going to teach you how to do that today. So the first pattern is one you may already know, but it is a really good way to get started and get some practice with these rhythm grooves. It's the train rhythm. So it sounds like this. Here we go. All right, man, that one's fun. All right, it's a great thing to start playing with. It maybe uh, is not um, as versatile as like the blue shuffle thing we were doing before, but it's definitely fun. Here's how it goes. We start with the one chord. That's the G, right? And we play that twice. And then we play the C chord, the four chord, right? 
And we played that twice too. And that's a pattern. We just repeat it, okay? So it sounds like this. So we're going G, which is draw, draw, and then blow. So if you tried this on your own, if you try this on your own, you may realize that it takes a hell of a lot of air. It really will wear you out if you don't have the right techniques behind your breathing. I really suggest that you breathe with your diaphragm. And if you don't know how to do that, well, I'm a singer and I've learned an exercise that is really helpful at activating that diaphragm and I go over it in a previous video that you can find the link to up here. The other thing that we can do to make this a little bit more doable is to articulate some words underneath our harmonica playing. We're not vocalizing them, we're just kind of like making the mouth movements, right? So what you can do is you can kind of attach some words here and the different articulations of the words will kind of create that rhythmic pulse without having to re-breathe, you know, going, <gasps> instead of having to do that, you can just say a word like tucka. That's what I do. I say tucka chucka when I'm doing the train rhythm. Here's that again. Tucka, chucka, tucka, chucka, tucka, chucka, tucka, chucka. And it sounds like this. So when I'm playing tucka, chucka, tucka, chucka, tucka, chucka, tucka, chucka. So that's the general idea. And a fun exercise here is to really commit to just doing the train sound. If we play fast and emulate a train, and I like using the holes uh, three and four draw as the train's horn. You put it all together and it sounds pretty cool, like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> there we go. And it's a really good thing to just practice speeding up on harmonica, okay? So give it a shot. If you're enjoying this video, give it a like. You can do that much for me, right? You scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. <laughs> okay, I don't know. All right, let's keep going with the video. The next pattern we have is a simple blues shuffle. This time following a 12 bar blues. It sounds like this. A one, a two. We are going to start with a simple shuffle rhythm, okay? It's something you've probably heard guitarists do all the time, and we can do it on harmonica super easily. We're just gonna go like this. We have a G to a C. But what really makes this work is to really get that swing in there. I'm gonna take it a little bit slower. One, two, three, four. So that's the idea. And something I'm doing here just to really break things down, okay? Because you might notice there's a little bit of like a, an accent on the uh, C chord. Okay, so when I go to the C chord, I'm, I'm kind of uh, taking my lower lip and I'm blowing extra air through it. So I'm kind of blowing some air and then putting my lip back on the harp. It's not a very like active process. It's just something you kind of learn how to do and it, it just creates a little bit of a rhythmic pulse to uh, chord rhythms, which I, I think is really useful. So try that out. So the first part of the pattern here fits over the one chord in the 12 bar blues. Now, if you don't know how the 12 bar blues all fits together, again, I do talk about it in part one of the series. So we can fit two chords twice in a measure. <laughs> Let me clarify, two uh, kind of chord cycles there, right? Da, 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 da. 
That's one measure. And we're going to do that four times. And that's how I want you to think about this, okay? Count in measures. Don't count in uh, kind of chord changes. It's going to really throw you off. Try to count in measures and just understand what's a measure in this case, okay? So we're repeating that process four times. And then after that, we are going to the C chord. You should know this if you know a 12 bar blues, okay? And what we're going to do here is we're going... <laughs> Now what I'm doing is I'm just blowing twice, and I'm doing this uh, sometimes in the low register, sometimes in the middle register. It's up to you. Let's do it on the low register. So we go. So that's it. That's one measure, and we're going to do that two times, right? There's two bars of that C chord. After that, we are going to go back to the one chord, and we're going to do two measures of it, which means we're going. Okay, right? And then we go to the five chord. And on the five chord, we're going to play a D chord. And let that hold through the whole measure. After that, if you're following the 12 bar blues, we are going to go to a five chord, which goes like four and five draw here. We're gonna hold it for the whole measure. And then we go to the four chord which I think fits here best in the middle register. And then we go back to that one chord shuffle. And from here, I really like to end this on some sort of a turnaround. Here's a really simple one that does not involve bends. We have two draw, one draw, two blow, one draw, like this. All right, and that is what we're playing. And when we put it all together, we get something that sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Right, that's it. Now we're going to go work this out, but we're going to do it this time with the backing track. And if you don't like the backing track, you want to play it acoustic, just go rewind the video and play it with what I just did. But for everyone else, let's go try it with a backing track. But stay tuned. Once the backing track's over, I have more to say on this topic about adding riffs and licks to this shuffle. Let's go jump now to some slides and a backing track. Here we go. All right, so this is a slow blues. We are going to play over uh, kind of Chicago blues style. And what I want you to do is play this twice with me. I'll try to tell you when the chords are coming in. After the second time, I'm gonna solo and you can try to keep the pattern going yourself. I know it's slow, but give it a shot. I don't want to uh, go too fast for you. So here we go. Two, three, four. Back 
at the shuffle. To the deep. To the sea. To the shuffle. Okay, let's continue. The cool thing about chord jams like this blue shuffle is that we can add riffs and scale runs to these patterns and create something new. It gives you something for your lead playing to attach to and it's just a great way to practice and improve at the blues, especially if all you have is a harmonica and you know, you're just pulling your harmonica out, you're playing one of these jams and you're adding these riffs to it and suddenly it becomes something that's way more complex and interesting. So here's an example. We can add some really simple riffs. Here's one. So we go one draw, two blow, and two draw. Okay? Just like that. And then we have another riff. Again, very simple, very common. We have one draw, two blow, three blow. And then I'm going to bend up really quick to the three draw. And if you can't bend, it's fine. Don't even worry about it. Just play the three draw. And then we end on two draw. It sounds like this. Just like that. So we can add these riffs, the and, and then combine that with the chords. And really, in my mind, I'm really thinking about those shuffle chords and I just kind of add those riffs in where they fit. And you know those chords like the C chord where we had that rest? Well, we can throw things in during that rest. We put all that together and we get something like this. I know that there was a lot of like riffs and runs in there that I have not taught you. And don't worry about it because the goal here is not so you can just emulate what I'm doing and just be me, right? The, please don't be me. Um, you know, the goal is for you to express what you want to express. It's all about what you're bringing to the table and the riffs and licks and things like that that you've learned and that you want to share. So I'm not gonna do this as a play along exercise. Just know that anything you learn, all those riffs and licks, you can add those to these chord rhythms, especially in this like blue shuffle pattern, this really predictable thing and uh, you can play some really cool stuff. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, give it a like. It helps me reach more people. Boop me, won't you? <laughs> that was really dumb. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for today. I'll catch you next week. Go play some harp and let me know how this is going in the comments, and if there's anything else you wanna learn, eh, send me a little uh, message and I'll, I'll get back to you. All right, I'll catch you next week.